Welcome, I'm Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. Today we're going to be doing some delicious Danish pastries and creme brulee cheesecake that we use in our bakery. I got into baking when I was a young girl at Girl Scouts. Actually, my first badge in Girl Scouts was the baking badge. But prior to that, I come from an Italian family, and the girls, when we were tall enough to get to the table, we were rolling pastas and making breads and making cakes and cookies, and all the women were in this tiny, tiny little Nona's kitchen, and we were doing and baking wonderful things for the entire family. So my hands have been in baking and cooking all of my life from the time I was about four years old. When my son got sick with cancer, Sir, he made me promise that I would fulfill my dream and open my own bakery restaurant, which is exactly what I did. So I went back to culinary school and got my degree in advanced pastry arts, and today we operate Roca's Bakery. We're going to start today with our first recipe, which is a Blitz Danish dough. And we're going to take three cups of all-purpose flour and put into your food processor with one quarter teaspoon of table salt or kosher salt, whichever, whatever you have on hand. If you've ever had a Danish from your local bakery, if you have a local bakery in your area, you'll understand how wonderful these are. But in the bakery, we take a long time to, uh, to make these. It takes actually two days to make the dough. And this is not real conducive to the home baker. So I wanted to create something new and wonderful for you all to do at home. So we've got three cups of all-purpose flour and a quarter teaspoon of salt in the food processor. And we're going to just pulse it twice just to mix it really well. And then to this, we're going to take four tablespoons of butter, cold butter, uh, that has been sliced fairly thin, and we're gonna put this into the food processor. And we're gonna pulse this maybe five or six times, maybe a little bit more than that, until it becomes incorporated with the flour. And you see, it's almost like a fine sand. Then we have eight tablespoons of cold butter cut into chunks. And we're gonna put this into or the food processor. And we're gonna pulse this until it becomes a little chunky, not quite a fine sand uh, consistency. These go a couple more times so that it's blended well. And so as you can see, we have little bits of butter in this flour, which is what we want to have because that butter is going to get rolled and uh, it'll incorporate in, into the dough and it'll cause the dough to raise up a little bit. So we're going to dump this flour and butter mixture into a large bowl. Mix some more things in here, some pretty big chunks of butter. And so one of the fun things about making dough is that you can get your hands in it. And if you can't play with your food, you are not having fun in the kitchen. So that's one of the great things about being a pastry chef or baking at home is that you can play with your food. So we've got that mixed up. What we're going to do now is take a quarter cup of hot milk and a quarter cup of cold water and mix it together. And to this we're going to add three and a half teaspoons or a little over one heaping tablespoon of instant yeast and we're going to mix that up. And we're going to let that proof for just a minute. And one of the things, if you've never used yeast before in any of your doughs or any of your baking, don't be afraid of it because this is fun. You're going to make things that are going to be fun to eat and your family are going to really enjoy. So this shouldn't be stressful. This needs to be fun. But one of the reasons why I like to put my yeast into the liquid, even though it's an instant yeast, is to make sure that it's good. One of the things that is discouraging when you're baking is you put the yeast into the flour mixture and you add your liquid ingredients and find out that the yeast isn't good and your product doesn't raise. So even as a professional baker, I always need to make sure that my yeast is good. So as you can see here, we've got a little bit of foaming action going on. That's exactly what you want to see here. So when you see that, you can go ahead and add one teaspoon of vanilla and we're going to add two beaten eggs and we're gonna mix this up. The vanilla gives this Danish dough a really nice, rich flavor. 
And so we're going to take this mixture, so let me add some sugar to this mixture as well to sweeten the dough a little bit. And then make a well and we're going to add this wet mixture into the dry mixture. And in imitating a lamination process that we do in the bakery, we just kind of smush the dough against the sides of the bowl here to kind of smash the butter into the flour which coats the flour with the protein, which is our butter. And actually the flour has protein in it as well. And if you see that your flour is extra dry or for some reason um, it looks dry to you and it doesn't look like this kind of cohesive dough that we're working on here, um, add just a tablespoon of water. You create a moist dough and the dough should be sticky like this. So you can see it, it's, I'm flinging it everywhere today here. But play with the dough. It's supposed to be sticky. I always said that the best tools a baker can have are these right here, your hands. So we're going to take this dough, we're going to work it a little bit like this with your hands until everything comes together into one mass. And then we're going to put this on the counter. Let me clean up here a little bit, some of this out of the way so that you can see what we're doing. So we're going to press this dough into a rectangle shape and we're going to fold it. We're called, it's called a fold and roll. So this is very rough dough, but as we go along, you'll see that the dough is going to start coming together. So we're going to fold it over once, then we're going to take the bottom and fold it up over the top like this. That's called one fold. And then we're going to turn it 90 degrees like this, same shape and we're going to roll again. So one of the things I was going to say about flowers is flowers hold humidity or dryness and the flower that I love to use in the bakery that we use exclusively is King Arthur flour uh, because it's milled uh, in local mills but it also has a very consistent hydration to it so you don't have to worry about adding extra liquids or it might be has too much moisture and then you have to reduce your liquids. So King Arthur flour I have found to be one of the best flowers that you can use for cakes, cookies, pies, anything like that. So we're going to grab some flour, all-purpose flour, so that we can continue our rolling and folding. So just go ahead and throw some flour or put some flour down on the board. And we're going to flour the top and make sure that we flour the rolling pin too because sometimes because this dough is sticky it will stick to the rolling pin so we don't want that. So we just want to to roll sideways and up and down to a length of about 14 inches or so and a width of about 9 inches. And this process is called lamination and it's a very fancy term for basically folding the flour into the dough and rolling it and pressing it in and when we fold and roll we're making thousands of little buttery layers in this dough which is wonderful and unlike a traditional uh, Danish dough that requires 30 minutes of chill time in between each roll and fold because this dough is a lot softer and we basically grated the, the butter into the flour already with the food processor that eliminates all of those steps that we have to do which makes it a lot easier for the home baker because you don't want to spend two days making dough at least most home bakers don't. But you can certainly try your hand at a traditional Danish dough if you want to. But we're trying to make it easier for the home baker to enjoy these wonderful bakery products. So now we've got a really nice rectangle going on and we're gonna go for our third roll and fold. And we'll brush the excess flour off. And we're gonna turn it 90 degrees again. Take that flour and coat the bottom and we're going to do one more roll and fold. Sometimes we want to press this rolling pin into the dough to make sure that it gets good contact. And as you can see the dough is becoming a lot smoother 
And remember we started out, it was really shaggy and really sticky and it was a mess. It's like what my kids used to say or my grandkids, it's a mess grandma, it's just a mess. This isn't gonna be like that when we get finished with it. It'll be a wonderful Danish dough that you can impress your friends and family with. So what we're gonna do, this is our, our last fold and then we're gonna go let it rest in the refrigerator. Now sometimes what I do is, it's kind of a shortcut in the bakery. If we're running out of time is I wrap this in plastic wrap and I stick it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. But you wanna be careful doing that because sometimes the edges can freeze quicker or get harder quicker because of all the butter in it than the center. And so when you start rolling out to form your Danish, it will crack and you don't want that to happen. So if you do decide to put it into the freezer make sure you check it about every five to seven minutes to make sure that the edges aren't getting hard so we're going to go ahead and get this ready for the refrigerator and we'll be back to shape and fill your Danish while the dough is uh, cooling in the freezer we're going to go ahead and start making our fillings that we're going to be using on our Danish today so we're going to be doing one is a cream cheese filling so we're going to take one eight ounce block of full fat cream cheese at room temperature and it's important that it's at room temperature, otherwise the cream cheese won't emulsify or blend together well with the egg and the sugar and that type of thing. So we wanna be sure that it's room temperature. We're gonna be adding about a quarter of a cup of sugar to this. Now if you have a hand mixer, uh, most definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, get that out and you can whip this up really nicely. Uh, if you don't have a hand mixer, Grab a whisk and stir it up. We're going to mix the sugar and the cream cheese together until it's mixed. And we're going to add one egg. And we'll just gently bring that together. And this filling you can use not just in Danish, but you can use it in a number of different uh, breakfast treats if you want to. It's great on bagels if you want to have a little bit of different type of a cream cheese, a softer cream cheese on your bagel. And to this we're going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. And if you want a traditional recipe for cream cheese Danish filling is adding a little bit of lemon zest uh, to this. If you don't have any lemons to zest or you don't have a microplaner to make zest, no problem. Just take a little bit of lemon extract or if you have even, you know, the little lemon juice uh, in the little squeeze bottle that you can buy in the grocery store. A lot of, a lot of uh, women have that in their kitchens and you can just take a little squeeze of the lemon juice and it brightens the flavor up a little bit in the lemon. Some people like that flavor, some people don't. It's really up to you and what you wanna put into your Danish because this is your Danish. So we're gonna mix this up, making sure that it's lump free. Now we need a little bit of a binder because right now it's really runny. So this will just kind of fall out of our cream cheese Danish and we don't want that. So to fix that problem, we're going to add about two tablespoons of flour. And that acts as a binder for the cream cheese filling so when it's chilled, it will stay put where it's supposed to stay on your cream cheese danish. And that's our cream cheese filling. It's really easy, it's very simple, doesn't require a lot of equipment or a lot of expensive ingredients. Just uh, one block of cream cheese, one egg, a quarter cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of flour a teaspoon of vanilla, and a little bit of lemon zest or lemon flavoring if you want to add that. So now that that's ready, we're going to go ahead and set that aside. You might want to wrap it and put it in the cooler. And then we're going to start on our glaze. One of our uh, shapes, I'm going to make a vanilla glaze for you. So we're going to take about three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar, and we're going to add a little bit of milk, and maybe a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And with this, because powdered sugar, it looks like a lot, but it doesn't take a lot of liquid to make the glaze. So you wanna add it in small increments only because you don't want it to be runny. You want it to kind of be able to push off the spoon almost. And you'll see the texture or the consistency that I want here real soon. This is the consistency that we want but I think I want to add maybe a tablespoon more of powdered sugar. Just a little bit stiffer. And you need to be careful when you're stirring powdered sugar. I've made this mistake so many times in the bakery where 
you start mixing something and you get this big poof of powdered sugar everywhere and I've had it in my hair, I've had it all over my clothes, I've had it all over my equipment, and then I had to stop and clean. So be careful when you're mixing powdered sugar. I mean, this is exactly what I want, this consistency, almost like you have to push it off the spoon so that it'll stay on the Danish. So we're done with our our vanilla glaze for our Danish. We've made our cream cheese filling. Our next um, filling is raspberry jam. There's not much that we have to do with raspberry jam. You can use seed or seedless, whatever your favorite is. You don't have to use raspberry, although raspberry is the traditional flavor for a fruit uh, Danish. So we use raspberry Danish, we make raspberry filling and use raspberry Danish for our fruit all the time. You can also use blueberry. If you're making a blueberry braid out of your Danish dough, you can have some blueberry filling in it and that's perfectly fine. You can use apples, homemade apple pie filling. You can slice apples and sugar and cinnamon and spices and chop them up fine and add them to your Danish. Whatever you want to do because this is your Danish and this is what should be fun for you. So one of the other shapes we're going to be making is called a pecan twist and it's one of our bakery's favorites and it, it requires chopped pecans, requires a mixture of cinnamon and sugar and again cinnamon and sugar some people like light cinnamon, some people like heavy cinnamon, it's your Danish you can make it as cinnamony as you want and we're going to make a bear claw as well and a bear claw again you can make a fruit filling, you can do cherry, you can use blueberry, you can use apple, uh, peach, I've done peach flavored um, bear claws, but today I'm going to make a traditional bear claw which is filled with frangipan, which is a very fancy French name for sweet almond cream. And you can, you can look the recipe up online if you want to. It's very easy to make. Um, and it smells wonderful because it smells so much it's just like almonds because that's what it's made out of is ground almonds. So we're going to be using this in our almond bear claw today. And we're going to go check on our Danish dough to see if it's ready yet to roll and cut and shape. So we're back with our Danish dough and so you can see it's firmed up nice and so we're going to lay down some more flour. We don't want it to stick. We'll flour the top a little bit. Grab my rolling pin real quick here. And we're going to do the same rolling that we did before except we're not going to fold this time because we're going to make it into a sheet of Danish dough. So we want to roll this dough about a quarter inch thick and a lot of people especially home bakers and professional bakers actually too have a have a problem knowing what a quarter of an inch looks like so we'll show you here in just a minute but it's okay to roll this dough to turn it and roll it if you have a hard time rolling it sideways I can remember when we first started our bakery before we had a laminating machine, I have a 30 pound roller and it's this big around and I would roll Danish dough almost as long as this counter by hand and it would take me about an hour to roll it out. So laminating machines are wonderful but for the home baker you're working with only three cups of flour. This will make eight probably five inch Danish. So you can double this but just expect the dough to be about twice as big as this. So you need to have a counter space and you need to have um, the, a good size rolling pin to be able to do that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of sizing up the sides, making sure that everything is straight. And if you have a clear plastic ruler that you use in your kitchen, if you don't, you can grab one and only use it for the kitchen. Don't send it to your kids to, with your kids to school or anything like that because it's, it'll be used for food products. But you can take that and you can just touch up the sides like this to make sure your sides are nice and even. And uh, this will ensure a good roll for you. This is kind of a messy process, so don't worry about the mess. Get your rag or your dough scraper and clean it up and just keep on going and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty because that's what pastry is all about. So we're going to uh, just brush this off with a pastry brush. If you don't have one of these, it's one of the greatest tools you can have in a kitchen, especially if you're learning to bake or you are a fairly accomplished home baker and you're just learning something new. So this is our dough. Now, what I'm going to show you is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. It looks kind of ominous, but it's called an accordion cutter. And this ensures that every square that you cut is the same size. 
You can buy them with only four wheels, you can buy them with five wheels. This has six wheels and you can expand like an accordion does or get it really narrow. I use this to cut pastas and so you can get these at Amazon. They're, they're not cheap, they're about 35 to 45 dollars but if you do a lot of uh, projects at home in your kitchen or even if you're baking brownies, um, bars of any kind, you can cut and ensure that every size is the same cut because there's nothing worse than having a grandchild say his piece is bigger than my piece, Graham Graham. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. So this, this gives us a very good um, size control. So we're going to uh, lock it in place by turning this little lever. I'm gonna narrow it up just a tad here. And all you do is you hold it and you roll it in place. And then you can take the scraps and save those for later. I'll tell you what to do with those wonderful scraps. Now you can't turn the dough at this point, so you're going to have to do this sideways, which is okay. <laughs> we can do it sideways. So we're going to narrow this just a tad to make sure that we don't have a lot of scraps left. You know, in the bakery, as well as your home kitchen, you shouldn't waste any dough. We use every little piece of dough that we can use. My, uh, one of my chef instructors when I was in pastry school <laughs> told me a little trick because I was always told, especially when you're dealing with Danish doughs or croissant doughs or puff pastries from scratch, you can't save the scraps, but you can. And he showed me a technique, how we do it. I'm gonna show it to you so you can learn something new today too. So what you do is you have a lot of scraps, you just fold it over like this and fold it again to make sure that the lamination or the process of rolling and folding goes the same way. So you can just stack these little scraps up and before it gets too warm, you can press them down a little bit and you can actually re-roll, fold it over the same way and re-roll this and make another actual Danish. So you're not wasting anything. If you don't want to make a Danish out of the scraps while you're doing the Danish, you can wrap this really good and it will freeze and keep for about a week and a half to two weeks in the freezer. Just make sure you date it and you mark it what it is so you don't forget what it is. And if you don't have an accordion cutter, you don't want to spend the money doing, uh, getting an accordion cutter, a pizza wheel is your friend. So you can get your trusty ruler out for, for your kitchen and you can measure off how many Danish you want to get out of the dough or basically how big you want your Danish. These are about a four by four or three and a half by three and a half square. And when you bake them, they will double in size. So if you're if you have this size dough, you're, you're going to have about an inch bigger in your final product, just so that you know. So we're going to go ahead and start filling. So we're going to put some of these aside so you can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to start with a traditional round Danish. I'm going to grab some egg wash, which is just a beaten egg with about a tablespoon of water mixed well. And we're going to wet our pastry brush and we're just going to lightly brush the edges. I love folding Danish dough and making beautiful shapes. And we're going to take each corner and push it into the center like this. And it makes a cute little pocket. And you can place these on your cookie sheet. You can line with parchment paper. You can buy parchment paper at the grocery store in rolls. You can order the sheets online from Amazon, wherever you want to get it. Or you can use a silk pad map, something so that it doesn't stick. So we're going to be making four of these. Again, bring the corners into the center. Bring the corner into the center and press. Bring the corner into the center and press. Now I didn't egg wash this. It's fine. Sometimes the dough is nice and wet or moist like this is and you don't need to egg wash it. But I wanted to show you that technique. So we're gonna make three of these little cream cheese pockets. And then before we add the cream cheese, we're going to brush this with egg wash so that it's nice and um, shiny. And I'm gonna sugar this with a special sugar that doesn't melt so it'll come out looking really beautiful and very professional for you. About a half a tablespoon, because these are on the smaller side, half a tablespoon of cream cheese filling. And we're gonna just dollop that right in the center of these cream cheese danish. And then we're gonna sprinkle it with a sanding sugar. Now sanding sugar is a sugar that doesn't melt. 
and you can get this online. Um, the best brand that I have found that gives the best consistency and the greatest sparkle and shine, which is what we want on our delicious Danish, is uh, King Arthur Flour or Bob's Red Mill, if they, if they still have it online. All the others that I've used online just don't give me the results that I like, so I order it in bulk from King Arthur Flour for the bakery. And we just want to sprinkle this sugar on top of the Danish, pretty heavy, and that will make it just sparkle like little stars all over it, and it's really pretty. I think we'll do the star shape next. So what, you can either use a knife or you can use your, your pastry wheel, and we're gonna take, on each corner, we're gonna cut almost to the center of the dough. You don't wanna cut all the way through, but almost to the center, like this. So you have, kinda of looks like one of those old medieval crosses. And we will need to do a little bit of egg wash on this to help the corners stick. And we're gonna take the top right corner, we're gonna press it into the center. We're gonna skip this one, and we're gonna go to the second point and press it into the center. Skip, and then we're gonna press the next one into the center, and so on. And what you're left with is a beautiful star shape. So we'll put that over on our tray and we'll do the next one. And as you can see, this goes really fast. And even when you're learning, it's not time consuming at all. Because I know moms today, they don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen, but they sometimes want to make something special for Valentine's Day, which we just had yesterday, or a birthday or anniversary. So we're gonna brush this one. Let me brush this one over here. Now this one we're not gonna sugar, although in the bakery I do sugar probably all of my Danish, but I wanna show you today in this uh, video tutorial what, what it looks like with an apricot glaze. It makes it nice and shiny and very beautiful, which is a very traditional finish for a Danish. The next one that we're gonna do is the bear claw. Now the bear claw, we roll out a little bit thinner and I'll show you why. We're going to take the rolling pin and just very gently, we're going to make more of a square, but not really a square quite yet. It's gonna be more of a rectangle like this, this kind of shape. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take a little bit of egg wash on both long sides. We're gonna take our sweet almond cream and we're gonna smear a little bit of this filling right in the center, but we're gonna leave about a half inch space on the edges so that we can seal it. Otherwise, you know, I try to fit as much filling in my Danish at the bakery as I can because our customers love as much as they can get, but we still have to be able to close it and not have it ooze out and bake all over the pan. So we're gonna fold it over like this. I'll sh turn it this way, and then we're gonna press the sides and the front down like this. So you look like a little, like a very large wonton. <laughs> a square wonton, but that's the shape that we want. And then we're gonna take our knife or spatula and we're going to cut into these edges so it's like a fan, about a half inch in between the cuts. And then we're gonna take and shape it by pulling it together like that, and that is your bear claw. Simple to do. Looks hard, but it's not. And we will egg wash this as well. So our next shape is going to be our pecan cinnamon twist. And this is a customer favorite in the bakery. So we're gonna take one of our squares and we're gonna roll it out to a fairly long uh, rectangle. As you can see, if you have a little bit of a edge missing on this one, it's no problem. Because this is a very forgiving shape. So we're gonna take a little bit of egg wash. We're gonna brush on each side. And we're gonna take some of our almond cream. Now if you don't make almond cream, not to worry. You don't need to have it. Um, in the bakery, this is what we do. So I just make a light coating of the almond cream. 
and we want to leave a little bit of an edge so that it will seal right. Then we're going to take our cinnamon and sugar, make sure, and we're going to just liberally, we like lots of cinnamon and sugar. And then we're going to take some roasted chopped pecans and pour over that and we're going to press it in so that it sticks real well. And then we're going to take and we're going to roll like a jelly roll style and we're going to roll the edges together and we're going to do the same thing on this side. And we're going to pinch it together and pinch the edges closed. We're going to flip it over kind of reshape it into a nice little log. And then we're going to take a knife or your piece of cutter and we're going to cut right down the middle. Except not all the way to the end. So we want this, we want it to look like this. We're going to take it and fold it over. And this is our twist part. It's not an actual braid, it's just a twist. And we're going to twist, twist, get that up in there, and twist. And we're going to take this and twist it and seal it there. And that is our twist shape. Very easy to make. Just cut it in two and take one edge and lap it over the other into a twist shape. And we'll finish making those shapes. So we're going to finish glazing and filling our Danish. So we're going to take some egg wash and we're going to finish brushing our star shapes. And we're going to use some raspberry filling on these star shapes. Again, you can use any filling you want. You can use strawberry, you can use, put a couple of cherries from a cherry filling on it. You can use blueberry, whatever you want. It's, it's your Danish, so make it fun. And whatever your family favorites are. These are our bear claws, so we're going to finish these off a little bit differently. We're going to brush them with egg wash. And while we're doing it, we'll brush the uh, pecan cinnamon twist with egg wash as well. And here we'll just pat it on because we don't want to take away from the filling. So for the raspberry, we're going to do a little bit of sugar, real light sprinkle because we're going to put some apricot glaze on top of that so you can see a very traditional finish on that. So on the bear claws, because we have almond, in the center, almond cream, we're going to press sliced toasted almonds onto the outside. Makes it really special and really, really good. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I know most grocery stores now sell sliced almonds in the baking aisle. If you want to make them extra special, please go for this because it really does make a difference. And when we're done with the almonds, we're going to go ahead and liberally sprinkle this with your sanding sugar. Now, don't use regular sugar for this. Try and find sanding sugar because the regular sugar will just make it burn in the oven. It won't bake like this. And we're going to go ahead and sprinkle the um, pecan cinnamon twists liberally again. And they're ready for the oven. So we bake these at 360 degrees for about 12 minutes. Check them at 12 minutes, rotate the pan. If you have two trays like this and they're underneath each other, bring the pan that's on the second shelf up to the top and the top up to the second shelf so that they bake evenly and rotate the pans. Uh, check them at 12 minutes. You want them to be a nice light golden brown and not burnt on the edges. So that's how you can tell when it's done. So we're gonna get these in the oven and get them baked for you. We'll be back in a flash. We're going to make a cream creme brulee cheesecake, which creme brulee is my favorite custard dessert. And I decided I loved it so much I needed to turn it into a cheesecake that we could sell at the bakery. So we're going to start with a graham cracker crust. We've got two cups of, of graham cracker crumbs. We've got about three tablespoons of sugar. We're going to mix up and we're going to pour in one stick of butter. 
Remember, these are our best tools as our fingers, so we're gonna just use our hands. If you don't like using your hands, just use a spatula. We're gonna combine these graham crackers, the sugar and the butter together to make a nice crust. Then we're gonna take a springform pan, and you do need a springform pan to make a cheesecake. It's a pan that has a little lever like this that you can open up the pan and it releases easy. Inside, I have buttered it and I put a piece of parchment paper down so you can get it out really easy. So we're just gonna take and dump this mixture of graham crackers and butter and sugar into the pan. And we're gonna take our fingers and press it up the sides of the pan like this. Some people don't like the graham cracker crust up the sides. I do. I think it makes a beautiful crust. And then we're just going to press it down into the bottom. And our crust is ready for the oven for the cheesecake mixture. And this is our mixture, our cream cheese mixture. We have three eight ounce blocks of full fat cream cheese. Philadelphia brand is the best. Uh, if you want to use an off brand, that would be fine too. But I've found that the name brand works the best for a, a really, really delicious cheesecake. And everything here in this cheesecake has to be room temperature. And this is why. Because the cream cheese, if it's cold and you're adding eggs to it, and you're adding sugar to it, and your sour cream and cream, it's not going to emulsify together and you're going to get little chunks of cream cheese in your batter. And you don't want that for a smooth cream cheese filling. So I'm going to add three eggs. I'm going to add a third to a half a cup of sugar. I'm going to add a half a cup of heavy cream. Heavy cream, yes, heavy cream, not milk. It needs to be heavy cream. And a half a cup of sour cream, which gives it a lot more flavor. And then we're going to add a full tablespoon and a half of vanilla extract. If you have vanilla bean, uh, that would be better, but vanilla extract works great. So our Danish are done baking, and don't they look beautiful? Again, if you want larger Danish, you can cut the squares bigger, but these are about a three inch cut, and they're just a perfect size for the family. So this cheesecake has been poured, the batter's been poured into the prepared pan. We've wrapped it in foil. We've got about an inch of hot water in a baking, a 13 by nine inch baking pan. And we're gonna place this in the pan of water to bake. It is called a bain-marie or a water bath. This goes into the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. You want a nice golden crust on the top and you know it's done when it's slightly jiggly in the center. Okay, our cheesecake is done. It's been cooled eight hours or overnight, and now because it's a creme brulee cheesecake, we're gonna brulee or burn the top. Now I have a kitchen torch here. Uh, if you don't have a kitchen torch or don't wanna purchase one, you can do this in the broiler in your oven, but you have to watch it very, very carefully because the sugar does burn very, very quickly. So we're gonna, but we're gonna torch it here. So to torch it, I sprinkled, um, a light brown sugar on top of the cheesecake and you just want to run the torch over the top until it starts to literally burn the sugar and the sugar turns to a liquid because that's what happens when sugar gets to heat. That's what makes our cakes moist, our muffins moist, that sugar actually melts and creates a liquid, which is why some recipes have a lot of sugar in it because it needs a lot of liquid and moisture. But we're going to go ahead and continue to brulee the top. And if you see that uh, there's a, a spot here that might not have enough sugar on it, we can just go ahead and sprinkle some and hit it with a torch. Again, be very careful. Don't let your kids do this. This is fire and it's a propane, a uh, little propane tank in here. This is an adult person's job uh, in, the, in the home kitchen, unless you have a teenager or somebody that you know can, can operate the torch effectively. So we finished up brulee the top of our cheesecake and as you can see, it's delicious. If we had smell-o-vision, it would be really nice because it smells like wonderful caramel, dark caramel in here.
So we're gonna finish up our Danish. We're gonna glaze and we're gonna powder, use some powdered sugar on our Danish. So we're going to um, start with our star shape. If you can remember in the beginning when we started our Danish, um, I said we were gonna glaze these with an apricot. So what I've done is I've taken apricot jam, I've heated it up, and I've pushed it through a sieve so we don't have any chunks of jam on our Danish. But if you want the chunks of jam, you can certainly do that. But I like a smooth finish if we're gonna do a jam glaze on the Danish. So I've got about a third of a cup of jam here that's been uh, pushed through a sieve and you want to do this when the Danish are hot so that the jam melts on the dough and it becomes nice and shiny and a little bit sticky, not kind of gooey, but you know, the kind of thing that you want to lick your fingers with. And that's all about pastries, at least for me anyway and all of our customers. There's finger licking good for pastries. So we're gonna finish this off. Then as you can see, it's nice and shiny and you wanna let it sit and cool and it'll dry. It won't dry hard, it'll still be a little tacky. So that's the way it's supposed to be. So we're gonna start next with our powdered sugar and our bear claws. This has been sprinkled with the sanding sugar and you can see it's nice and sparkly, but I like to finish it traditionally. This is what we do with our bear claws with a nice shower of powdered sugar. And we're gonna finish our cream cheese and our pecan cinnamon twists with our powdered sugar glaze that we made earlier. You can remember we wanted the glaze to be about like that consistency, almost like you have to push it off the spoon. And we're just gonna drizzle it. Now in the bakery, we put this in a piping bag and we're very deliberate about our glaze. But there's something I think about rustic glaze on a Danish. The Danish seem to be so perfect and we work so hard to get it. I like to mix it up a little bit and put something rustic on top of it. And we're gonna glaze the pecans at an angle like this. Something, like I said, a little bit different and unexpected in a traditional Danish. That's kind of the nectar of gods in our bakery is the glaze. And that's it. Our Danish are done. Thank you for joining me on this episode today. As you can see, we've made some delicious uh, Danish pastries, our raspberry cream cheese, our almond bear claws, and our pecan cinnamon twists, as well as our creme brulee cheesecake. If you've enjoyed these recipes today, join me next time on our episode when we're doing everything Italian. 